dear friends welcome to this edition of vbs neuro this is an e learning project it's entitled corona radiator in this we are covering the neuro anatomy lectures i have called them as lockdown videos which you can go through at home this is in in tune with the current situation where you know we are all at home working from home teaching from home during the uh, period where this pandemic is being controlled i hope and pray that we come out of this successfully and uh, very soon we can start our classes the practicals so these are all preview lectures before you can come back for the practicals the topic in the neuro anatomy series is spinal cord part 4a which roughly gives you in this particular video gives you a overview of the white matter or the white column now this is the white matter surrounding the head shaped gray matter it contains ascending and descending tracts but before that this is a, 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 an add on good slide to reinforce the point that although it covers the head shaped gray matter we can roughly divide the white matter on each half of the spinal cord into an anterior funiculus lateral funiculus and a posterior funiculus these are these terminologies are respective to the uh, gray matter and also please note Uh, the importance of the dorsal root ganglion the posterior root and the posterior rootlets because this ganglion the cells of this ganglion are the feeding cells the efferents of which enter the um, spinal cord so this is a very important point to note now let's start with the um tracts let's try to uh, have a panoramic view of the various tracts virtually a, a conducted tour to know where which tract is located and uh, the more important ones in what functionality should we remember it as i told you the tracts can be ascending and descending although these are symbolic uh, i have put the two pictures on this side and that it doesn't mean ascending tracts are on this side and descend you know this is only for our understanding please be assured that ascending tracts and descending tracts are there both sides they are virtually intermixed and extremely difficult in a structure study to really say which is ascending which is these are these details have been done Uh, have been identified based on certain research studies and we are able to uh, exactly zoom in and say this is such and such a tract now of these let's let's examine the ascending tracts please remember again i have shown the ascending tracts on only one half with the note that it is there on the other side also along with descending tracts which is also there on this both sides have both ascending and descending now you see this is the first tract we are covering there is no particular order of importance in which i have covered all of them are equally important this one dorsal and ventral spino thalamic tract the dorsal is in the lateral funiculus the ventral spino thalamic nucleus uh, tract sorry the tract is in the uh, anterior funiculus this is important because it conveys sensations of pain and temperature upwards uh, into the 
brain stem and beyond these fibers will go to the brain stem and beyond conveying pain and temperature sensation next exclusively in the posterior column is the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus these are important because they are almost exclusive in the posterior column and to some extent please please note it is it is it is particularly the track to remember for touch we will call it proprioception where position movement vibration pressure just a, just a few sub components these are conveyed to the higher centers brain stem and beyond now this fasciculus gracilis uh, is uh, coming these are the incoming fibers from the lower part of the body roughly in the mid thoracic segments the fibers of the fasciculus cuneatus gets added on next dorsal and ventral spino cerebellar tracts once again important very particularly to note they are there right underneath the surface in the lateral funiculus this is very important right underneath the surface in the lateral funiculus now they handle proprioceptive impulses from muscle spindle golgi tendons and then they raise it up the spinal cord they will use the uh, peduncles through which they will reach the cerebellum that means in addition to the other tracts giving information to the cerebrum through the thalamus here is a tract that will give some amount of sensory inputs to the cerebellum through the uh, peduncles that are there in the brain stem next spino olivary uh, tract next spino tectal tract this tract is associated with visual spinal reflexes that means it helps to coordinate through its sensory inputs between what is seen in the in the eye by the eye and what kind of uh, reflexes are required by the rest of the body muscles in tune with what is being seen that's why we call it as visual spinal reflexes that's about that's as an overview of the ascending tracks now this parachute is symbolic of the descent tracks now you see the mother of all descending tracks are the the important tract which gets the highest amount of attention is the pyramidal tract these the tract fibers originate from the cerebral cortex pass through the posterior limb of the internal capsule then pass through the brain stem finally in the medulla a large percentage of it about 80% of which cross over they undergo what is called as the pyramidal decussation after crossing they run to the opposite side after they cross over, crossing the midline they go to the opposite side that's why below the medulla you have two components of the pyramidal tract one is the anterior the smaller one and the other one is the lateral or the bigger one the larger uh, group of fibers which have crossed over to the opposite side is the lateral corticospinal tract in other words the lateral corticospinal tract is in the lateral funiculus the anterior corticospinal tract is in the anterior funiculus this i told you is is very very important in terms of motor functions that's why we gave it so much importance it is associated with voluntary discrete and skilled 
the movements like for example if you are operating the buttons of a, a cell phone it involves lot of uh, motor control this track uh, is the first track you should remember in this context next the rubro spinal tract see it's a location relative to the lateral corticospinal tract in the next there are three tracts very close to the surface uh, the tectospinal vestibulospinal and olivospinal tracts now these tracts among these the vestibulo is is in is particularly worthy of mention because it is associated with generating or transmitting equilibrium related messages for the extensor muscles of the body that means vestibulo spinal that means the nucleus with which it is closely associated in the brain stem is the vestibular nucleus where in response to certain inputs coming from the vestibular apparatus of the internal ear it readies the necessary signals that will control the various extensor muscles of the body like for example you slip and fall certain amount of muscles are put into quick reflex action so that you may even attempt to uh, uh, fall in a way that you don't get hurt I mean, to, a, to a great extent this tract plays a very very important role next lateral and medial reticulo spinal tract shown in yellow now this tract generally handles posture and automatic movements like while you are walking there are certain incidental movements of the uh, upper limb which you will notice so in addition to the main walking which is controlled by the pyramidal tract this will make sure that all the other automatic movements associated with this so that the balance is maintained the posture is maintained uh, it's all functioned by uh, by the messages transmitted by this tract through this tract so that was a, a, a brief conductor tour just to show you where which tract is located and uh, some of the more important ones we said well uh, well everything is important but some of the important more important ones in the sense where a clear structure or and a function can be uh, assigned we have referred it to such and such a function ultimately you will realize that these tracts ascending and descending coexist on both sides of the spinal cord second both are functioning 24 by 7 365 days continuously even in your sleep next all the tracks that i have mentioned are not necessarily end to end like for example i will give you an example if you are going into a very tall building a skyscraper some 80 floors 90 floors that kind of a huge tall building you get into the lift there will be so many lifts plenty of lifts but each lift will have a, a designated uh, area of coverage of course there will be a lift one or two lifts where it will stop in every floor till it reaches say the 80th floor or 84th floor but then imagine the amount of time you lose if the lift stops in every single floor and goes up instead what we do is we have lifts where for example i'll give you some amount of speed versions of how to reach to the upper floors there may be lifts which may stop in odd floor odd numbered floor certain lifts may stop say in even numbered floor or better still more practical some of the lifts may cover only the upper floors 
some of the lifts may cover only the lower floors like that you can you can think of so many uh, combinations uh, possibilities so that you the the person reaches his destination floor in the least time uh, that can be uh, assigned for this same thing here also when you translate it into these tracks there are some tracks which run end to end from one end to the other and also continue further beyond into the brain stem similarly from the brain stem or above it down here for example the fasciculus uh, gracilis the upward going tract or the pyramidal tract the downward going tract it goes right down to the last spinal segment but then there are many tracts which arise somewhere in midway i told you the uh, fibers of fasciculus cuneatus comes starts somewhere around the mid thoracic area like that there can be tracts which may be shorter in length rise higher up or lower down you can also have tracts which arise in one segment and end in a few segments above or a few segments below it's it's like the shuttle bus service that you have short distances uh, you go by shuttle bus long distances you go by corresponding bus or you can take examples of your in the flights long distance transcontinental flights then short distance flights within your uh, city all all possibilities are there the same thing here also these tracks are also similarly uh, designed this is only for a uh, comparison now that was a, a short uh, tour of the ascending tracks and descending tracks and how these tracks form the core of the white matter i am sure you would have benefited from this lecture if you have any feedbacks please feel to write to me on this email id of mine or you could also post your feedback on the blog area below the youtube video now that was a video from the anatomy department of st john's medical college and my name is dr balasubramanyam we are located in bangalore india thank you my dear students staff and friends for your patient hearing wishing you all the best